Finally, the last set of monthly expenses can be categorized as leisure and entertainment and mainly consists of subscriptions such as Spotify, Amazon Prime, iCloud, and OnlyFans. What, what? what did he say? Hey. Oh. If you've clicked on this video, then you're probably curious to know what the cost of living in Germany is like. For Germany in particular, rising prices are a burden for households and businesses alike. Inflation and high energy prices brought on by the COVID pandemic and then the war in Ukraine have hit household budgets hard. The economy is struggling. There's no other way of saying that having grown in only two of the last six quarters. It's very difficult economically in Germany right now. Mm -hmm. So with all kinds of buzzwords being thrown around such as a cost of living crisis, a stagnant economy and inflation, basically due to what is happening around the world at the moment, how much should you expect to pay every single month in order to live in Germany? In this video, I'm going to attempt to answer that, but keep in mind this is from my perspective as an international student, and it is possible that how much I spend in a month could be way more or way less compared to another person. My expenses will be divided into seven parts, and the amounts are basically an average of what I've been spending in the last six months. But before we get started, I've noticed almost 80% of you watching are unsubscribed. So I kindly ask that you leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel as this year I plan on making more videos about living, studying and working in Germany. And I wouldn't want you to miss out on any of them. I'll wait. Now that you've subscribed, let's get started. We kick off this video with the biggest part of my monthly expenses, and that is rent and utilities. This amount is dependent on four main factors, which are the city that you live in, the size of your living space, how far from the city center your house is, and whether you live alone or you live with other people. So for example, I live in Munich where the rent prices can range from 350 euro for a student accommodation all the way to 1,300 euro for a one-bedroom apartment. I also stay in a vege, which is basically a house with multiple bedrooms and spaces such as the kitchen, bathroom and toilet are shared. For this kind of living arrangement, I pay 500 euro vermite or warm rent, meaning it's inclusive of utilities such as electricity, heating, radio tax, internet and so on. Not too bad considering how expensive Munich is. Keep in mind that most German cities are gonna be cheaper than Munich and also the cost of utilities tend to decrease with the more number of housemates you have. Let me know in the comment section if you're interested in a video where I talk about how to find accommodation in Germany. Next, we move on to another important monthly expense and that is health insurance. First of all, you should be aware that in Germany it is illegal not to have health insurance even if you are young, fit and healthy. There are also two types of health insurances based on your age and I will use a video I did a few weeks ago to explain them. One important thing to note is that if you are above the age of 30 years, you have the option to choose between private and public health insurance. But if you're below 30 years old, you are forced to select the more expensive public health insurance. Because I am younger than 30 years old, every month I pay 129 euro for health insurance. Honestly, seeing that transaction on my bank statement on the 15th of every month is usually very difficult because I can go months without needing to see a doctor, but money is constantly being taken away. But there is a way you can reduce the amount you pay for health insurance, and that is by getting a job either part-time or full-time, and your employer pays, I think, half the cost of your health insurance, and the rest is removed from your monthly salary.
The third item on the list is food and groceries. This particular item seems to be impacted the most by inflation because the prices always seem to be constantly rising every other month. With the inflation, everything got, got higher, like the price of, for a living in the center here is like at least 500 bucks. It's so hard. So just for context, back in 2022, I used to spend 22 euro per week on food and groceries. Now in February 2024, it's roughly 30 euro per week. It is also important to note that I am still eating the same number of meals per day and of late, I have had to resort to buying cheaper brands in a bid to try reducing my spending. So if I spend 30 euro per week, that is roughly 120 euro per month and if you do a breakdown, it basically means I roughly spend 1 euro 33 cents per meal. I don't really know if that is low or high, so let me know down in the comment section below. Another important cost that I have to pay for every month is transportation. Public transport in Germany is pretty good to the point where I haven't had to use Ubers, Bolts, taxis or even drive in the last 18 months. Recently, the German government introduced the 49 euro or the Deutschland ticket, which has really helped to streamline public transportation in Germany. This is because once you pay the 49 euro, you can travel using any bus, tram, train, except the high speed ones, in any part of Germany as many times as you want in a day, week or even month. But... I don't have to pay the 49 euro ticket because as a student in Munich, there is another subsidized ticket which is the same as the Deutschland ticket but at 29 euro. So for 29 euro every month, I get unlimited rides on all but one form of public transportation throughout the whole country. One of the reasons why coming to study in Germany seemed like such a great opportunity for me was because it was a way of acquiring high quality education but at an affordable price. This is because when I applied to study at my university, it was tuition free. Well, I can't really say that anymore since the top ranked university in the country suddenly decided to implement tuition fees for non-EU third countries. Anyway, that's a topic for another video. Currently, the only school-related expense I have is an 85 euro semester fee that is typically for six months. So that breaks down to 14 euro 17 per month, which I guess counts as my lowest expense. This category mainly consists of stuff which helps me maintain my health, well-being, and appearance. So it includes things like soaps, lotions, vitamins, and grooming costs, plus others such as cleaning and laundry costs, for example, buying detergents and dishwasher soap. So for this category, every month I spend about 15 euro. I know this amount may seem low, but that's because of two main reasons. The first one is because once these items are bought, they tend to last for months, and two, I haven't really started going to the gym, so probably when I do, the cost in this category will increase. Finally, the last set of monthly expenses can be categorized as leisure and entertainment and mainly consists of subscriptions such as Spotify, Amazon Prime, iCloud, and OnlyFans. What did he say? I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm only joking, relax. Apart from monthly subscriptions, once in a while I treat myself to activities such as swimming at an indoor heated pool during the winter, which costs about 5 euros for a couple of hours. Summing all of these expenses together at the end of the month, for leisure and entertainment, I spend about 40 euro per month. This to me seems like such a small amount compared to what some of my friends who regularly go out spend. But you can let me know in the comment section down below what you think.
adding all the costs from the seven categories together, I usually end up spending about 849 euro and 17 cents per month. Just keep in mind that if you live in a smaller city, there is a high likelihood that the total you will be paying for per month will be lower because you will be paying less for rent. Because out of this total, 60% of it goes into paying rent. So that means on average for all other expenses combined, I pay less than 350 euro per month as an adult living, studying and working in Germany. And there you have it. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more insightful content. If you have any other questions or topics you'd like me to cover in future videos, let me know in the comment section. And until next time, bye bye!